BetterStack lets you see everything and fix everything, and in this changelog, we're excited to introduce the BetterStack MCP server. This lets you use AI to analyze logs and errors to uncover root causes. It can assist with status page updates and guide you through your post-incident tasks. Let's take a look at the MCP server in action. I have the MCP server connected to Claude Desktop in this instance, and I'll show you how at the end of the video. But for now, I can start off with a query about my oncall. So I'll say list my oncall calendars. That will run the list oncall calendars tool. There we go. I can see the oncall calendars that I have access to, as well as some additional information like who is currently on call for them. If I want more specific details, I could ask it something such as what is the schedule this week for the EU schedule on call calendar. And with the list on call events tool, we get back that information and it's now in natural language. Now, let's say we have an ongoing incident. With this, we're able to create, manage and collaborate on incidents from the start to resolution. So I'll start out with a prompt saying list all of the unacknowledged incidents from today. And in the response I'm getting back, I can see that there is currently one unacknowledged one, as well as some information about the incident itself. And I'll follow up from this by asking it to fetch me more details, as well as the incident timeline. And with that, it fetches the information that's needed via the tools. And we can see it's written up a report here about the incident details, as well as some of the key issues that it thinks it's found and the next steps needed. We also have a link here to view the incident on the Better Stack dashboard. So now that I know the incident details, I think this is one that I should acknowledge. And I should also let my users know that there might be a few issues with the checkout for a status page update. So I can ask Claude here to write one for me and also update it, then acknowledge the incident. With that, it ran a few tool calls. First, it listed out my status pages to make sure that it could get the right one. Then it got the status page resources. Finally, it saw that there was some downtime for the checkout flow monitor that I have. Then it created a status page report. We can see that it wrote this out by using the LLM, which is super nice. After that, it went ahead and acknowledged the incident. Now I can view the better swag status page. And on here, I should be able to see the status update that was just created by the AI. If I then check the incident inside of better stack, we can see that it has been acknowledged by me. Back in Claude, I've now fixed the issue, so I want to mark it as resolved. I also want to leave a comment on the incident, letting my colleagues know what happened. So I said, mark this as resolved and add a comment explaining that the incident was related to a bad rollout and a new release has fixed it. And there we go. It ran the create incident comment tool as well as the resolve incident one. So when we open it up in better stack, we can see the incident has been resolved as well as the comment that I left via the MCP server. So hopefully you can see just how useful this is going to be for working on your incidents. You can also utilize the other uptime features like monitors, heartbeats, and status pages. For example, I could say list my monitors and it gives us a nice report back of the active monitors that I have as well as some of them that currently have issues and the paused monitors. And I could say something like what's the availability of my storefront monitor this month. That gives us a nice SLA summary and uptime percentages. Check the documentation for the full list of uptime tools. There's loads more in there, like the ability to create incidents, as well as view your escalation policy details. Next though, let's take a look at using the MCP with your telemetry data. I'm going to start out by asking it to show me recent error logs for my checkout service. With that simple prompt, we get some really powerful information back. You can see it listed my better stack sources to make sure it could find the right ID. Then there's a tool called get query instructions, which essentially tells it how to build out these ClickHouse queries. Then it's able to execute a few ClickHouse queries with the information that it got back. It's reported a recent errors overview where it has an error breakdown by type here. Then also some key observations that the LLM has picked up from that data they got back, as well as some recommendations. So you can see this will be really powerful as well if the LLM has knowledge of your code base in a tool like Claude Code, for example. It's also really useful at building out the queries for you. So I can say, build me a query to find the HTTP 500 errors from my logs. And then here in Claude Desktop, I actually get back an artifact which has a few examples of how I could query my data for this. So this one up here is for recent data. Then it has another query for historical data, then showing the count by endpoint, and then also an hourly breakdown. Now I could use one of those queries with better stack, or I can simply ask this to run the first query for me. And there we go, it executed the ClickHouse query, and we're getting back a summary of those 500 errors. There's loads more telemetry tools that you can use. For example, you can also get the field details for your logs and spans, so you can query them. And that gives us back a nice summary of all of the fields that we're able to query. And there's also tools for metrics as well, so I can ask what metrics are available. And we get back a nice overview of all of the available metrics that we can query and visualize. And at the end here, it even gives us some recommendations of the dashboards that we might want to create with this information. Again, you can see the full list of telemetry tools on our documentation. But now let's talk through how you can add this to your own AI assistant. You can find the example configurations for our MCP server on our documentation. There's one here for clients supporting HTTP servers, but there's also one for those that don't. 
In my case, since I'm using Claude Desktop, I'm going to be using this MCP remote version. Next though, if you want to query telemetry data, we do highly recommend that you include your cloud connection details with the configuration. So in my case, I will be using this config here. Now, as I said, it is only recommended to include the cloud connection details for a smoother experience as the MCP server is still able to create its own cloud connection if needed. Including them should just result in a smoother experience, especially when you're sending follow-up queries as sometimes it does end up hallucinating the username or the password. With the config that you want to use copied, head to the tool of your choice and add this into the MCP settings. In the case of Claude Desktop, you can find this in the settings, then under developer and click edit config. Then inside of the JSON file, we can simply paste in the information that we copied. And next, we need to go ahead and get our BetterStack API key as well as the cloud connection details. For the API key, head to BetterStack and then go into your settings. From here, go to API tokens and we recommend that you use a global token so it has access to uptime and telemetry across all of your teams. In this case, I created one called Claude Desktop MCP Server. For the cloud connection details, you want to go to telemetry and then dashboards, then go to connect remotely. And from here, you should see ClickHouse HTTP client. Click connect. And in here, we can configure our connection so we can choose which cluster we're able to connect to, as well as what data should be available. In this case, I'm going to select James's team only. Then there's an IP address allow list, so you could add your IP address here or leave it empty to allow all. Set up the time frame for how long this connection should work for, then also leave a note for your team. In my case, I'll say James MCP server so they know what this connection is for and we can click create connection. With that, you should see the details that you need and we need to make sure that we save the username and password here as you won't be able to see this again and you'll have to create a new connection if you lose it. So I've set that information as the environment variables inside of my config here. The better stack production auth token is going to be the API key. Then the user password and host is the information we just saw from the cloud connection. With that, when you restart Cloud Desktop, you should see that you have access to the BetterStack MCP server, as well as all of the tools that are available. And our test is working by sending a quick test prompt to fetch my current on-call status. And there we go, everything seems to be working and it's able to fetch the information. So that is the BetterStack MCP server. So that's the BetterStack MCP server. We'll keep shipping and I'll see you in the next changelog.